Oh, oh goodness. Oh, man. Five. Downhill. Five, five. Yeah, definitely in the fives. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You all have another one to make up, so here we go. All right. Fulvic acid. <laughs> Let's go. People freak out when they hear the term acid. We probably should have covered that early on. And the other, the, the series, we're doing a series. We've, we've yeah. been talking about dry humix, liquid humix. We're now we're talking about fulvics, which all derive originally from the same location. It's yeah. just which process has been done to further. I have um, a great analogy that uh, someone else came up with is it's like the petroleum. It's like you have oil that comes out of the ground. You have refined oil, motor oil. You have diesel fuel, then you have gasoline. Yep. Think of humix and the whole process in the same cycle. Which to is a so funny because that's carbon too. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yes, it is. And so, um, start. That's a bad, bad squirrel moment. Oh, I don't want to go that road. Okay, so fulvix. Um, then the world of acids. I mean, there are so many things in this world that are acids, amino acids. Mm -hmm. It's a building block of life. So if you hear the word acid, don't freak out. Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there. We hadn't talked about that yet. Um, but we've got, we've got dry humix. We've covered liquid humix. And now we're talking about fulvic. Fulvic is, is made from liquid humic. And so... It's 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 the it's a m more refined process. It's one that we have seen uh, really implemented heavy when we're focusing on moving something into a plant at a rapid pace. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. I mean, that's hitting the nail on the head there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, fulvix. We're just trying to get whatever you want to get into a plant. Add fulvic. Yeah. Um. So. Now, one thing, I mean, fulvic acid does have a very, very high CEC, okay. okay? But it's a small molecule, okay? That small molecule plays great dividends on getting nutrients into the plant, okay? Actually, I'll give a little shout-out to Joel Williams. I went to one of his um, ag days in Omaha here recently and talking about how adding that carbon barrier for a foliar feed, it's, it's more about making sure that ion's more of a neutral ion then it by itself could be very negative or very positive when applied. Okay. Um, Cause then the plant actually is able to take it in better. Hmm. Okay. It's able to flow in through that membrane better. Um, and that's what the fulvic acid helps with. Okay. Not only that fulvic acid, since it's a smaller chain, it's a quick, nice biological food. Okay. Okay. So it's going to take that form. Biology is going to eat it. It's going to poop it out. Okay. Plant can recognize that or the bacteria can actually bring it back into the root. Up to up the plant, plant, up it goes. goes. Yeah, so um, foliar, foliar feeding is where my mind goes. I, I personally like making sure it's added to starter. Um, it doesn't have to be high rates, but some. I plan on doing that this year. Yeah. I'm switching from fulvic in my, in my, in my in furrow. Now, two by two, you know, still, you know, a great case for humix. But if we're, if we are wanting to move fertility... Because, I mean, I don't know many guys that run a starter that go, I don't want this in the plant right now. Yeah. You know, it's like, all right, I'm putting this in. The seed's going to germinate, and I want the fertility that I put with it to go to that plant. Yep. All right. So, you know, making sure that you have a high-quality fulvic um, to move that nutrition in. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, I've run humic in furrow and raised great crops. So, you know, research it. Look into your own, look at your own personal situation, your operation. Yep. Um, but yeah, and so we've we talked so much about the you know foliar foliar feeding has been such a to big topic the last couple of years. Guys have guys have used it. Guys have got you know love, guys. Some guys love it. Some guys feel like they've got burned on by it. Um, and early on, I didn't think I was. I mean, I thought it was just. Okay, I bought these bags from, you know, whether it was your your local ag retailer, and just dump it in my sprayer and go spray it. I didn't know that temperature made a difference. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that water <laughs> pH made a difference. I, you know, yeah, just dump it in and go because no one tells you. Yep, very few people. Now there's a lot more information that's come out. You know, we've tried to do a lot of series and podcasts about foliar feeding and improving nutrient intake and availability, and then timing. Yes, you know, when do you want it? 
how do you put it on? How do you make it most efficient? How do you make it plant safe? How do you make it biology friendly? I mean, there's so many aspects to this. My head hurts. I no. know, right? <laughs> you know, you got guys that are running RO water. You guys got guys that are running, collecting rainwater running. I mean, this is, it is a big, big topic with yes. so many facets. Yes. And it, you know, it boils down to, all right, if I am, if I am wanting to get chemistry into a plant, herbicide, fertility, things of that nature, you know, a fulvic is, it's a, it's a chain. It's, it's the, it's the, it's the carrier. Think of it as a carrier. Yeah. Um, yep. And that's really, it's not, you know, I don't know, maybe there, there's, there's a lot more information on it, but that's really what it boils down to. I want to get a into B. Well, yeah. And I, you kind of use the analysis too. I know I shared at field day, a humic acid I see as a hotel or a home. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see fulvic acid of taking a minimum maintenance road and it turns into an eight lane hi- or interstate. Yeah. Yeah. Eight lane okay. highway. Yep. So think of that as like how nutrients are able to go into the cell membranes, be utilized by the plant. Sure. Um, but I'm with you too with herbicides. I use it with fungicides. Um, sure. Pasture spraying with the drones. I mean, I could tell within three days if I use fulvic or not with a 240 torn mix. Gotcha. Um, and honestly, it blew my mind. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you can see the difference about getting that into the plant. Sure. Um, if you got a drier climate, how can we, you know, we're already struggling getting, getting, you know, things into plants. It's just, I mean, and it's not, a, it's not expensive. Well, in some cases, <laughs> some, well, some it, cases yeah. it is, yeah. but you know, we, we do on, you know, in our company, we try to do our best to keep it as low cost, you know, a low cost, high quality product that can benefit the farmer yes and i mean there is very seldom times where my sprayer leaves this shop and it does not have fulvic in it yeah Yeah. um just because you know after learning and it's a continual learning process man there's still good information there's still research coming out about you know added benefits it's not really negatives yeah it's like oh this is doing this is cool too Oh man, this has been discovered as well. Well, and I mean, going to that point, and I'm not, I'm not going to say this is going to happen on everybody's farm. This is just an observation I had on the acres I checked. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed like we were getting an additional five to seven days out of residual. Which, I mean, that's yeah. that's what I've seen, or at least that's what it felt right. like. Uh, the people that were utilizing fulvic, it seemed like they were getting, you know, that five to seven days. And I think to myself, if that five to seven days is difference between canopy or not, then that's huge. Absolutely. Now, if it's not, then it, I it's, mean, you're going to be going out there. Sure. Any, you know what I mean? But absolutely, um, that was cool to see. We need to do a podcast, and this would be like tin foil hats, deep dive in the relationship between soil biology and weeds. What triggers a weed flush? We can't go out. We do not have time, Johnny. We can't do this. I'm We're talking smiling about, so I know. fake right it's now. Like, oh, we could do this. Yeah. So anyway, if you're interested in that, we'll do a podcast on that. Yeah. Um, anyway, and so uh, just wanted to bring fulvic around as, you know, some is a higher use rate, some is a lower use rate. Depends on the concentration. Yes. Um, yeah. Look at the label. Look at the label. It's very important in any product out on the farm, whoever's it is, the, to make sure that you understand how to read a label and yeah. what's on there. Yeah. Um, look at the percent concentration, how much water is in it, so on and so forth. Um, you know, can you be benefited by buying a more concentrate? And then at the same time, I don't know, just, just learn to ask the right questions. Yeah. Where did it come from? What was it made from? Yeah. That's probably one that, that benef- would benefit a farmer the most is if someone comes to them with a carbon product, ask them what's it derived from. Yeah. Where is it made? Where you know what is the <laughs> where? Yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? And then what was the process made? What was the process? Um, you know. And so it's really, I mean, you we say beef is beef. You know, okay, beef is beef. But was it grass raised? Was it raised overseas in a feedlot? You know, it's like. Yes, beef is beef, but there's so much more to it than that. Yep. Um, nutrient. I mean, hamburger is not just hamburger. No, it's not. I think. I think we everyone we're, we're can preach, agree we're, on that we're, front. We're, we're, we're preaching to the choir right yeah, now. Exactly. But it goes the same thing with 
a lot of aspects within agriculture. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I just I get to the parent point. material. That's yes, the word I was trying there to think you go. Of. Yeah, what is the parent material? Where is it from? Yeah. Yes. Um, we just got to know that. I, I also I think Fulvic is another easy start, <laughs> like an easy way to get into stuff. It is. Um, and what's nice about Fulvic too, it's a lot v- more versatile on what it can mix with too. Um, yes. Because like one thing with humic acid, if it's acidic conditions, you could see precipitates. Fulvix, you don't have to worry about it. Which, I mean, there's some people that are really pushing Fulvix over humix now. Sure. And I guess I, I haven't talked to them one-on-one, but I think the reason why is how much more versatile Fulvix are. Humix still have Less their chances place. of a mad customer. Well, mad customer or even just uh-ohs, you know, uh-oh mm-hmm. situations and... Um, yeah. That's why I think those Fulvix, we're seeing a big push of them right now. Yeah. It is very user-friendly. It is. It is. Um, I do think starters, or if you're doing a side dress in season, it's a no-brainer. Sure. Um, I think it helps out tremendously getting that into the plant. Yes. So, like when we talked about wide drops with the liquid, mm-hmm. okay? I'm okay with lower rates of humic, mm-hmm. but I am darn sure going to have Fulvic. Yeah, and you can run both. Yeah, yes, you can run both. Yes. In that situation... At, I mean, le- at least from what we have, what yeah. we source as yeah. a company, you yeah. can run both together. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's... Here, one one bit of caution is... And this is a... You know, I ran a, I ran a various low pH, like a two-point-something pH fulvic one time um, with a heavy... With, a, with my herbicide pass, and it was... It, it made it too hot. It was too too hot, um, and so you know now we. It's just that's just as farmer to farmer. Make sure you you know test do some testing. I don't want to I want to throw up red flags and now make everybody nervous about fulvic, but make sure that you know who you're working with. Make sure that they have in the field experience with it. You know, um, yeah. My favorite <clears throat> my favorite is you know. Burn down, yeah, fulvic, um, fungicides, fulvic. Yep. Uh, we want to get that into the plant. Foliar fertility, fulvic, um, starters, things of that nature. When you know the, like I said, post emerge, post emerge applications. There's a lot of research to be done out there. Well, yeah, and I just think, and I have done ease, it very successfully. Ease into it. Just make sure you're running the right one. Yes, the right fulvic. Yeah. So, yeah. well, and just yeah. know what else you're adding into that system. Absolutely. <laughs> and that goes back to what's the co-op selling you, you know, mm-hmm. for your adjuvants, so on and so forth. Just just know what each piece of the puzzle is doing because mm-hmm. then if you add another ingredient on top of it, like you said, it might be a little too hot. Sure. So, yeah, yeah exactly. just, just cautions. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're just here trying to be farmers helping farmers. Farmers helping farmers. You know, so yeah. I would Jar feel, test. Yep. You know, be sure to run a jar test. Take what you're doing, add a little bit of your product. This is just on anything. Yeah. If you're adding something new to a tank mix, take a jar out of your out of your, out of of your your tank of everything and then add in your add product. Yep. See what happens. Yep. Stir it, let it sit, look at it. Does it change? Does it draw, fall out? Because it's a whole lot easier for it to fall out in a jar or a bottle than it is in a 600 gallon starter tank. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I added, uh, I added 28% and KTS together at a 50, 50 rate one time. And in my strip tail bar, don't do that, Johnny. Okay. Don't do that. Turns to sand. Sand. Yeah. That's nice. And then, you know, oh, you need to add a bunch of water to it, <laughs> which is the answer to most things. <laughs> <laughs> Culture, just add water when, to it. When in doubt. <laughs> when in doubt, add water. So anyway, anything else on Fulvic? That really is. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a more complex, it's a, it's a complicated molecule, but it's really not too complicated. It's, Le- it's the easy. Logi- the logistics side of Fulvic and the things that you have to think about are a lot less. Yeah. You're and, not dealing with, with literal hundreds or thousands of pounds of dry humic. You're dealing with a box. Well, in our situation. In our situation. Is a box. And yeah. Or I'm a not, tote. And maybe in other, you know, in other situations. Yeah. I but, mean, that was uh, one thing I do. I do like about our product and helped me, you know, gear towards Singular too was, you know, taking a box and knowing that's a 200 to 400 acres worth of full vacuum. sure you and know, then that, knowing and then having the sign the hey you know not just why it's like it's or not having the why it's like this is why 
Yeah. How come this is in this form and this is over here is in a tote or, you know, whatever it might be. And then knowing the difference between the two. Yeah. You and know, going back and be like, oh, that's what the label says. That's right. I like, mean, pull the label off. Let's <laughs> yep. look at it. Yeah. And so, yeah. No, I think Fulvix, I think it's a very, it's an, it's a very uh, simple step to increase what we're already doing, the efficiency of what we're already doing on our operations. Yeah. Yep. And I know it is. Yep. I've done it for a number of years now. Yep. Um, and so, like I said, it, that sprayer, um, that planter, they don't leave. The, they don't leave here with. It. It's very seldom that they leave here without fulvic in the tank. So just when they're getting repairs, or yeah, that's when they're getting, <laughs> <laughs> really getting fixed. So anyway, cool. All right, that's uh, if you. Anyway, we do we do offer these. We do yeah. offer these. Um, if you're interested, check it out singularagronomics.com. Um, run my finger right here. Kirk's going to throw up the, that or, and, or the link is in the description. Yeah. So yeah. check us out there. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Farm on over and out. See ya, guys. Thanks for watching the content so far. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got all the full length podcasts, other video information, tutorials on there. Also on all the major, uh, podcast platforms and social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. So if you like this, go ahead and check more out on all those platforms.